Today we're speedrunning Geometry Dash since 2.2 finally added platformer mode. And we're going to be 100% speedrunning the tower, which means we're going to get every single gold coin, all three blue coins, and beat the time requirement in each level to get that 100%. And right away what you're seeing is we're just trying to go as fast as possible using the best strategies so we can almost always hold right. Obviously there are a few points where we're going to have to stop like with those fireballs back there, but it's very important for as much as possible to keep moving so we can get some good speed especially since there are some things in this game that are cycle based like right here where we can just barely make that cycle so we don't have to wait out that thing spinning and get our last blue coin a little bit faster now this is going to give us this long hallway where we have to make it to the end and we get a short little kind of cutscene. so while this is happening if you end up enjoying the video i'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe just helps me in the youtube algorithm and all that but after waiting a little bit he finally says and yeah, man, I see you too. Ha ha ha, what a weirdo. But because we got to look lovingly into each other's eyes, he'll finally open the gate, which we can get through just a little bit faster by going through the top, and we can grab all three of our coins that we earned, making us see the same guy again, where he just starts maniacally laughing, and that's because he has a trap set up for us where he drops us to the ground. Now, once the level completes, you'll see the timer at the top actually pauses, and that's because what we're going to do is add all the timers for each level up together, and that's gonna give us our final time. It's how the speedrun community decided to do the times, just so it's actually your gameplay counted rather than how fast you go through the menus. But now we're on to the second level, and right away, you'll see me doing some pretty cool strategies but unfortunately we do have to wait out that cycle and not get crushed by those things so that is a little bit of a time loss where there's not much we can do about it but then we have to come right back around and we're going to drop this blue coin right over here now we can make that jump to the platform so we're a bit faster wait that out just one more time before heading back up and this time we're actually going to go into the door on the right and this leads us to a room that i honestly really like first of all we have to press this red button and then it's going to spawn a bunch of platforms with spikes spikes coming out of the ground fire that's getting emitted from both the left and right side and a lot of coins we have to get now one interesting thing about this version of the game is if you collect two coins at the exact same time then it will only count as one so that will completely get rid of any of our chances of getting a 100 speed run done and yes i have lost a lot of runs to that before i actually understood it so i was very careful to make sure we did not collect them at the same time but after a bit we're on to the boss fight where this is actually really cool i love this whole section not the best for speed running since there's not too much you can do to speed it up but when i was playing it casually my first time definitely one of my favorite parts of it so you're just seeing us we're just dodging all these spikes we don't have to worry about the spikes on the ceiling because we can't jump high enough to hit them and finally after we get through that we're going to grab this last blue coin and that's going to be every single thing we need to collect we can get all those coins go in this door and that's going to be level number two done in less than 100 seconds so that's pretty good now on to level number three, and this has some of my favorite movement in the entire game. First of all, we're gonna switch to this little guy. I love this guy so much, he's so cute. And he's also perfect for these platforming levels since we have a lot of control on how much height we wanna get when we jump. So we can do tiny jumps right there just to make it over the fire. And other points like right here, we can do a big jump so we can both get the coin and make it over those things. Now right here, I hate this spiky part. I always just kinda randomly jump and hope we don't get hit by them. I could definitely take it slower especially because this section is cycle based and it's pretty easy to actually make that cycle but i mean what channel are you on right now what do you expect now we get this guy again yapping up a storm when that's my job so what we're gonna do on him is jump and yeah that is probably the most disrespectful thing i've ever seen in my life good job little guy usually i have the entire game muted if i'm gonna be honest when i'm doing these runs but after talking to us forever we get the skeleton guy who talks to us with subtitles and i'm pretty angry because they've already wasted enough of my time so we're gonna take this bomb put it directly in his face and that's how we're gonna move on which you know i kind of feel a little bit bad about that but not that much i already forgot him and what his name was so we're just gonna go ahead and take this next coin which is gonna be under those crystals i'm gonna be honest if i never watched the speed run i probably would have never been able to figure out where that coin was so many of these coins are super well hidden but that's not important right now this is another cycle based thing where what we're going to want to do is make these small jumps so we're just barely able to hit that last coin right at the bottom of that thing before getting another pretty well hidden blue coin and that's going to be all the coins that we need to get so we can go ahead and grab all of our big coins 
and we completely destroyed that time one i love seeing that how we beat it by like over 10 seconds and we're gonna do even better for the last level the secret hollow now while we're just getting into this level i just gotta give my admiration to rob top for this because this is an amazing update i've been enjoying it so much little known fact about me i'm actually a huge fan of geometry dash but I've never been the greatest at it. But I love watching people like Aeon Air and Eric Von Woderman. It's just so good that we finally get a mode that I'm good at being platformer, which I guess some people are probably gonna be like, you're not that great at it, which fair enough. But you know, at least I'm a little bit better at than just the regular game mode. I'm so excited to see the user made stuff in this game. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. But unfortunately we got switched off of little guy back to the cube dude. And we're just gonna be moving to the right a little bit before we get trapped in a cage and we can't make it out of here to be fair they did have a literal sign that was telling me i shouldn't come in here so that was my own problem but right away as soon as we get dragged away we want to start jumping so that way we can escape the cage as fast as possible it really wasn't the greatest cage in the world they probably should have put some more thought into it but what we're gonna do is press another one of those buttons which drops that box that you saw that we need to platform up here now what i want to do at this point is while the conveyor belt is moving i want to jump on the boxes which i did mess up a little bit but not too much of a time loss especially if i can get this jump where i need to grab that coin now you need a box to grab that coin and then for the higher coin you need a double box so since we made the cycle we needed we didn't lose any time at all and that little mistake doesn't really matter but now time to go into the ball transformation machine which is probably extremely painful but i love the ball part first of all we have to go back to the left and this is because there's going to be one of the blue coins right over here. So many of these are so well hidden. I don't know how I would find that if it wasn't for me just knowing where they are. Now we have the Pac-Man section and we have to dodge all these ghosts, which they're always going to follow the exact same pattern. So we can always use the same strategy each time. Now what I'm going to want to do is both grab all the coins, obviously, and also the keys since we have to get all of the keys to open that door and go back to the right. Then for the next section, we have these rolling balls. And this is much easier, honestly, than the other one, because if we do it in the right way, you're seeing that we're getting everything extremely quickly. Finally, we go up to the right wall. We wait the ball out. We can get all that stuff. And it is finally time for the boss fight, which if you played this boss before, you might think that it's kind of just an auto scroller. We just have to make it through. But no, we actually have speed strats for this and they're pretty cool. But first of all, we do have to wait him out. You know, he has to do his power up. He has to show us that he is the cursed thorn. He really thinks he's a cool guy. And now he's going to start shooting fireballs. So he is going to do three red fireballs and then he's going to do one green one. And then we can shoot the green fireball right back at him. But our shots actually can miss. And every miss is like a five second time loss. So for these first two shots, what we're going to do is wait till he starts coming back to us just to make sure we actually do get the hit. Then for the third one, we're going to be right under him. And for this one, we're actually going to use our speed strats. Now, normally how this phase works is if you hit the curse thorn three times with his fireballs, then he is going to go into the next phase. But the next phase is a bit slower than this one since we'll have to deal with different attacks. So what we're going to want to do is manipulate him by waiting a little bit. We're going to wait until he does his next green shot before we hit him with the former one. And we'll just keep doing this, making sure they are starting to like go away if you don't hit them fast enough. But with that, we can get five shots within this one phase where normally you're only supposed to get three. And you can see why it's nice on the third phase now because he's gonna start using his laser attack and it just takes a while to come out. It stops him from using fireballs. So yeah, we wanted to get those attacks and just to make sure we can get that bit of a speed up. And this phase is only gonna take two shots when it takes like four or five usually, I think. So yeah, it's going extremely fast. But now he is also going to add in his slam attack where a bunch of terrain comes up from the floor and you have to jump over it. Now this by far is the hardest phase just cause there's a lot to deal with and you can get bad RNG. And also my nerves were going insane because this was a super good run, but we were somehow able to get the win. And what you'll see is we're actually walking over the lava. Though the platform takes a bit to actually spawn, you can go over to the lava right away and it doesn't even matter, which is kind of hilarious. But finally, we're gonna take all the rest of our coins to make sure we can get that 100% speed run. That level will be complete and we'll end with a time of 8.51, which is gonna be second place on the speedrun leaderboards and I'll take it. All right, subscribe if you enjoyed.